that means that I'm living a lie and I don't want to live a lie. I want to face what is true about myself even when it isn't pretty. And oh man, this is something that I can be so, so guilty of. Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you watched my latest Q&A, you know that I am pre-filming some content in preparation for baby getting here. But as you're watching this, we are now within the week of baby's due date. So it's crazy to me to think that baby could be here as you're watching this if he or she came early. I will be probably announcing it on Instagram first. So if you're curious to see if baby has been born or not, you can head over there to check. I don't know at the time of filming this when they're coming, obviously. So who knows? But today we are going to be talking about this question, are you deceiving yourself? So if you don't know, I did a Bible study with me series going through the book of James a while back. It's one of my favorite Bible study with me series that we've ever done. I love, love, love the book of James and there's just so much practical wisdom in it. And one of the things that kept coming up, especially in chapter one, was this concept of self-deception. It references it several times. You kind of can't miss it as you're reading through James. James chapter one. And so as it kept talking about deceiving ourselves, it made me ask the question, am I? Am I deceiving myself? To deceive oneself, I'm looking at some Bible study notes I took over here, but to deceive oneself is to fail to admit to oneself that something is true. So if I am deceiving myself in any way, that means that I'm living a lie. And I don't wanna live a lie. I want to face what is true about myself even when it isn't pretty. And so we are going to unpack this question of are you self-deceived by looking at what James chapter one has to say about this and how we can know if we are self-deceived or if we're not. And so we're gonna dive into that. If you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. I make Christian faith and lifestyle content and give this video a thumbs up if you find it helpful or encouraging. And if you want to dig more into the book of James, I'll also link the James Bible Study With Me series down below. But as for now, we'll get started with reading. We're gonna read through the second half of the chapter, so starting with chapter 12 all the way through the end of verse 27. If you wanna pull out your Bible, I highly recommend doing so and reading along with me. And then as always, I'll have the screen up or the text up on the screen. So verse 12, it says, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless." 
Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. So that is the passage we're gonna be unpacking. Comment down below if you had a little ding go off in your brain every time you heard the word deceived, knowing that's what we're gonna be talking about because again, it mentions it several times in this passage. So let's unpack it a little bit. Okay, so from this passage, how can we know if we are self-deceived? What are some indications of self-deception. The first way I can know I am deceived, or another way to put it is, I am deceived when, when, one, I fail to recognize that everything good in my life is from God. James 1.16 says, do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Now, I would never say this out loud or probably even ever consciously think it, but I think if I look at those subconscious thoughts of my heart, I can sometimes catch myself looking at certain things I have in my life and thinking to myself, like, like, oh yeah, I have this because I worked hard for it, or I have this because I deserve it, or I have this because I waited for it, but all of those things are false. According to this verse, every good thing, every good and perfect gift is from God, a gift of his grace, not anything that we have earned or deserve. And so according to this passage, I am self-deceived when I fail to recognize that God is the giver of every good gift I have in my life. And so when I'm not thanking him for those things or when I'm attributing the good things that I have in my life to my own merit or my own hard work, then I know I am self-deceived. The second indication of self-deception is this. I I am deceived when I hear the word only and do not do what it says. James 1 22 says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. And so it's saying here that when we hear the word, but we're not actually doing what it says, then we are deceiving ourselves because the Bible is not just meant to only encourage us, which it does certainly encourage us, but it is also meant to convict us. It is meant to reflect back to us the ways that our lives are not in line with how God has called us to live so that by the Holy Spirit, we can come into a alignment with how God has called us to live and make those corrections. It gives the analogy of here of somebody looking into a mirror and to read the Bible but to not do what it says is literally like looking into a mirror and seeing a piece of spinach stuck in your tooth and saying, oh, well, that's just there and I'll walk away now and go about my day with spinach in my tooth. I've used this analogy before because I love it and think it's so helpful, but we would never do that, right? We would never look into the mirror and see something wrong or amiss and not do anything about it. In fact, the entire reason we even look into the mirror is to see if we're good to go, right? To see if I've got lipstick on my tooth or spinach in my teeth or lint on my shirt or whatever so that I can then correct those things and go about my day. And the same is true of God's word. It is the perfect word of God that we are looking intently into and it reflects back to us all the ways that we are imperfect. And as we see those imperfections, we're to bring them before God, repent of those things and ask God again by the help of his Holy Spirit to guide us into his way that he has called us to live. And so according to this verse, we are deceiving ourselves when we hear the word of God, but do not do what it says. And oh man, this is something that I can be so, so guilty of. I've shared before that I have this tendency or this temptation to believe that simply because I've wrapped my mind around something the Bible is saying intellectually, I can deceive myself into thinking that I'm actually living it out. And that's not always the case. And so I found that I need to be really diligent in asking myself when I do read something in the Bible of what is this reflecting back to me? What is this showing me that I need to repent of or ask God to help me correct in my life and to come into alignment with how he has called me to live? 
The third indication of self-deception is this. I am deceiving myself when I think that I am religious, but I have no control over my tongue. James 1.26 says, If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. And so if we think we're this amazing Christian, yet we do not have control over our tongue, then we are in that. We are deceiving our own heart. And I have an entire video on taming the tongue where we're unpacking from James chapter one, all the different ways that we can go awry in terms of not taming our tongue. But the one that always really comes to mind is gossip. I feel like this is one of those sins that Christians, including myself, tend to kind of tell ourselves isn't that big of a deal, but it is, it is a big deal. Gossip is poison to relationships where God has called us to unity and to using our tongues to build other people up. When we are gossiping, we are tearing them down and we are allowing poison to seep into the relationship. And something I found too is that when somebody is willing to gossip with me, then I probably should know that they're probably also gonna be willing to gossip about me. But when somebody refuses to gossip about another person with me, that creates a secure security and a confidence in that relationship that they're also going most likely to refuse to gossip about me. And so our tongues are a big deal. This verse says that if we do not bridle our tongues, what is a bridle? A bridle is what is used to steer a horse. So a horse is this big, powerful animal, but it needs to be told where to go. Its power needs to be harnessed in the right direction for good. And in the same way, our tongues are powerful. Proverbs 18, 21 says that life and death are in the power of the tongue. And so we need to learn to use our tongues for good rather than evil. And a very practical thing that can help us with this, we can find earlier on in the chapter in James 1, 19, where it says that we are to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. And so those are three indications of self-deception. One, that when I fail to recognize that everything good in my life is from God. Two, when I hear the word only and do not do what it says. And three, when I think I am religious yet have no control over my tongue. And so those are signs that we are deceiving ourselves. What then, on the other hand, what is true? Well, James chapter one gives us the answer to that as well. In verse 27, it says, religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. And so as we're checking our hearts and asking ourselves those questions of, am I deceiving myself? Am I failing to recognize that the good things in my life are from God, failing to thank him for those things? Am I actually putting into practice what the word of God says when I read it? And do I have control over my tongue? As we're asking ourselves those questions, we can also ask ourselves, are we caring for those in need? the widows and the orphans, those who are in affliction, and are we keeping ourselves unstained from the world, which happens as we renew our minds in the word of God, which is why I'm so passionate about putting out so much Bible study content here on YouTube. And so I hope that you enjoyed this little James chapter one Bible study on ways we can know that if we are deceiving ourselves, I would love to hear from you down in the comments, which of these three points resonates with you most. As always, thank you so much for being here and I will see you in my next video. Bye.